gentlemen, my brothers and my sisters, in the Lord, from wherever you may be joining us, from Cyprus to Switzerland to United States of America to parts of Africa and uh, Asia, we welcome you. I know that, I know that, I know that tonight is a night that you will surely be blessed. Uh, please, our viewers, you can leave your comment, and if you have any question, you can ask. That is the way uh, we have this program. After the, after the message, uh, we can bring in your, your question. And uh, I know that I know that I know. Uh, I want to introduce this, this, this man of God. Uh, I know a man in the Lord that... Uh, without iota of doubt, I know the hand of God is upon him, and I know that he carries the presence of God. I've been given the opportunity to be around him, and uh, I, 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 I know that he, he carries the unction to function. Uh, <laughs> he carries the, the, the mega anointing with the omega with him. Hallelujah. Uh, I know a man that I can, I can smell the anointing. Whenever I'm around him, I can smell that anointing. Hallelujah. Mm. This evening, uh, pleasure is mine to welcome, to join us uh, all the way from Florida, Dr. King and Briggs. God bless you, sir. You are welcome. God bless you. Thank you. So good to be here. I, I've I've been missing Switzerland, so th this will have to do for now. Hallelujah! <laughs> this is the way the the Lord the Lord wanted it for now. But we know that by the grace of God, 
this one too shall pass over. And uh, uh, not only Switzerland is waiting for you, Pastor Elijah is just joining from Cyprus. And uh, he is also, he and his people, they are waiting. So whenever you come, we have to do Switzerland and Cyprus together. Yeah. It was awesome yeah. the last time that we went there. And uh, yeah. even during this program or after the program, I, I will be playing one of, um, you know, you made some prophecies there, and God is bringing oh. it to pass to prophesy. Oh. Uh, uh, Pastor Elijah sent me uh, a, 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 through YouTube uh, a track that was done by two members of the church. It was It's really, really powerful. Uh, mm. I'm going to look for a way to, to play it. And I remember you, 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 you made mention of something like that. And this is just that you're, you're coming here, you're going to Cyprus. The, the testimonies are there, and we give God the glory for your life. Uh, Amen. Tonight, Amen. Uh, Apostle, uh, this is our online service. Uh, I want mm. you to, to take your time, you know, uh, to share on what you are going to share. Uh, uh, we will be taking notes. So afterwards, uh, uh, we'll see if we have one or two questions. And what we are treating tonight is uh, navigating uh, perilous times. Hallelujah. Mm. So, sir, uh, you can open up with a word of prayer. Anything uh, is just yours. Hallelujah. <laughs> God bless first you, of all, sir. First of all, I want to give honor to God and thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Uh, Pastor Jonathan and your family and your ministry for hosting this event, uh, this this session. I believe that it's ordained by God. Uh, and with that in mind, uh, let us pray. Amen. So, Father, we just thank you tonight in the name of Jesus, Lord, that your presence will permeate the atmosphere, that every word spoken tonight is only that which is ordained and commissioned by you that you alone may be glorified. Thank you that people are being touched, they're being healed, they're being set free by reason of the anointing. Amen. So we are cautious, we are careful to give your name all the glory and all the praise, for it belongs to you. We commit this time into your able hands. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Yes, uh, it's, it's been a quite an interesting um, go, quite an interesting season, because for the first time in many years, the whole world has been on standstill. Uh, we haven't seen anything like this in modern times. And uh, the whole globe, every country observing the same protocols, every country shutting down, churches not being able to meet physically. And so this has been quite a unique time. And it's interesting because this is what the Bible would call perilous times. Mm. Perilous times, times of great peril, times of great difficulty for so many people. In the United States, we had 1.2 million cases of coronavirus. Um, we had 700,000 people file for unemployment in the United States. And, uh, you know, the United States is kind of the standard globally. So everybody looks at our country to see what's going on and see how they should respond. But by the grace of God, our company is, our, our country is reopening, cases are declining. Uh, millions of people are recovering. Uh, the mortality rates are going down. Uh, in fact, I just went to a restaurant and people are eating in the restaurant like normal now. Mm. It's quite interesting. But I, I really begin to think about what it means for us to prosper in times of peril mm. or how we navigate through perilous times. And one of the scriptures that God gave me was... Um, Genesis chapter 45. Now, this is interesting, especially for our nation. And I'm going to Isaiah 45 to show you something. 
in Genesis 45, verse 10. Now, this is amazing because this is the 45th president of the United States of America. And 10, the number 10 actually represents double grace. Now, this is, this is ironic because there doesn't seem to be anything gracious about the things that have been going on. It seems to be hectic. But look at what the word of the Lord says. Genesis 45, 10. This is, this is actually the, the, the children or the descendants of Jacob being commissioned by God to dwell in Egypt. Remember that their land had experienced great drought and barrenness yes, during, during, during the famine. Mm. And so now Joseph, who is the vice regent of Egypt, he's one of the highest ranking uh, leaders in Egypt. He, he gets this word of the Lord, this instruction, and this is what God says to him. Mm. says, and thou shalt dwell in the land of Goshen, and thou shalt be near unto me, you and your children, and your children's children, and your flocks, and your herds, and all that you have. Mm. Now, Goshen was a, it was actually a, a, a territory within Egypt. It's almost like Egypt surrounded Goshen. But it was a territory. And this territory was very rich and very abundant. In fact, the word Goshen means near, to draw near. Hallelujah. To draw near. Now this is this is interesting. Now, if we go further, we go all the way to the book of Exodus. Look at what it says. Exodus chapter 8, verse 22. This is 400 years later. So the scripture I just read in Genesis 45 was 400 years prior to this scripture. Mm. And look at what it says 400 years later. He says, and I will sever in that day the land of Goshen in which my people dwell, that no, that no swarms or flies shall be there. Mm. To the end that thou mayest know, I am the Lord mm. in the midst of the earth. Look at what he says in Exodus chapter 9, verse 26. He says, only in the land of Goshen, where the children of Israel were, was there no hell. Mm. In other words, there was plague falling on the entire nation of Egypt, mm. which represents the world system, right? There was plague. There was locusts. There was hell. There was swarms of, 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 of locusts. There were all these things destroying the economy destroying the Egyptian system. But the spirit of the Lord says that I commanded that no locust, not even one, mm. was allowed to enter into Goshen. Hallelujah. It was no, it was not permitted into Goshen. Mm. Can you imagine hail falling everywhere, mm. but not one hailstone had the permission by God to fall on the ground in Goshen. Mm. So now this is interesting because this is a type in the shadow. Goshen represents the covenant that we have with God. It represents the distinction between the world and the people of God. But here's the key. The word Goshen means to draw near. Hallelujah. And during this season of pandemic, this, in, this season of plague, and pandemonium, God is calling the body of Christ to draw near to him. Hallelujah. Near in intimacy. Mm. If we draw near, God says there's a distinction between you and the Egyptians. Mm. It's a difference between you and the Egyptians. Now, this is powerful. This is powerful, Apostle, because when we, when we look at this, this promise is very, very real. Hmm. You know, I, when the when COVID nineteen hit, many people were devastated. They were afraid. They were terrorized by the fear of everything. But I, I did, I did something very, very significant, and the Lord led me to do this. So what I did was. 
one Sunday, I, I was meditating on Psalm 91, verse 10, which says, No evil shall befall you, neither any plague shall come near your dwelling. So I said, God, what I want to do, I want to agree with you on behalf of my church. And so my wife and I, we agreed and we sold $91.10 as a prophetic act. Now, I never told, I never uh, required this of my church. Mm. I never required mm. this of anyone. This was personal revelation. Mm. This is my own. This was what God instructed me to do. Okay. And so. What I did was in obedience, I did it. And this is what I said. I said, God, I'm sowing this not just for my family, but I'm sowing this that not one of our members, not one of the family of our members will be devastated by COVID-19. Hmm. Not one of them. That the evil will try to come, but it will not befall them. So guess what happened? One of our members... Uh, uh, begin to have symptoms. They begin to cough. They begin to have all of these things in their lungs, breathing, and they had all of these fears. Mm. But we begin to pray. Mm. When they went to the doctor, mm. <laughs> when they went to the doctor, Pastor, yes. the doc, the doctor said, "Well, you have a little mucus in your lung." They said, "But there's no COVID in your body. You are negative for COVID nineteen." <laughs> We had a, we had another lady the same thing, no COVID nineteen, and the and the reason why I believe this is important, this is the time, for us to place a demand, on our covenant relationship with God, this is the time for us to draw near. Hear this by the Spirit of God, fear, fear will always keep you from drawing near. Let me say that again. Fear will keep you from drawing near. The very nature of fear creates distance between that which you fear. So what happens is, imagine the Israelites. When the plagues are coming, they could have been tempted to run with the Egyptians. Can you imagine the hell is falling and they want to run they see all these Egyptians running. They want to run with them. But God said, no, stay in my presence. Mm. Stay before me. Get closer to me. Spend more time with me. Because our, the safety of the Israelites was in their proximity to God. Hallelujah. The safety of the Israelites was in their closeness to his presence. The safety of the Israelites was not in how far they got away from the storm, but it was how close they got to the Father. Mm. And as they got close to God in the midst of the storm, the Bible says that there was a there was a distinct difference between the Israelites and the Egyptians. I want our listeners to understand that God has put a difference between you and the Egyptian. Yeah, God has right. put between you and the world system. You don't have to suffer the same fate as the world. You don't have to experience the same destruction as the world. God says, if you will draw close to me in this hour, if you will spend time in my presence, if you will seek me like you've never sought me before, God says, you are going to see a Goshen phenomenon a ghost phenomenon. There's going to be a Goshen phenomenon in homes, a Goshen phenomenon in churches, a Goshen phenomenon in communities. Pastor, my wife and I, when the when the when the um, pandemic hit, we would go to the store, and there was no, uh, you couldn't buy any hand sanitizer, you couldn't buy any any uh, bleach, you couldn't buy any Lysol spray. You couldn't buy any toilet tissue, nothing. So what we did, because we couldn't buy it, even if we tried, we blessed what we had. Mm. We said, you know what, Lord, I bless what we have. What we have is going to work for us. I have 10 people in my home, 10 people, including myself. Mm. For seven weeks, we never ran out of toilet tissue. Mm. For seven weeks, 
We never ran out of materials. For seven weeks, we never ran out of anything. In fact, it was like it kept multiplying and multiplying and multiplying. We never ran out, man of God. We never ran out. And the reason why we didn't run out is not because of our own righteousness, but the Lord has placed a difference. People need to catch this. The Lord has placed a difference between you and the Egyptians. He has placed a difference between your household and every other household. And that's why you have to be careful not to compare yourself hmm. to what everybody else is experiencing. It's dangerous. When we make comparisons, we abdicate our spiritual protection. Hmm. Oh, I got to say that again. Yes, sir. When, you make, when you make a vain comparison, right, what you end up doing, you are violating the covenant you have with God and you are abdicating your spiritual protection mm. because you're saying, okay, why, why am I not experiencing what this person is experiencing? Why am I not experiencing what this person is experiencing? And the reason why you're not is because of the distinction. And God is saying that in this hour, we must be aware of the law of distinction. It's a spiritual law all throughout scripture. The law of distinction. Watch this. When God called the Israelites out of Egypt and put them in, and, and he put them in the, in the wilderness. Hallelujah. Yeah. So. As, he, as, he, as he put them in, as he began to take them out, what did he say to them? He said, if you hearken, to my voice, Exodus 15, and do what is pleasing in my sight. I will put none of the diseases on you that I put on the Egyptians. For I am the God that heals all your diseases, the law of distinction. When they go throughout the wilderness, God speaks to them through Moses and says, I'm going to put my terror upon you, that all the enemies of God will hear about you before you get there, because I'm making a difference between you and the pagan nations. Then he says to them, he gives them the law of circumcision. He says, I want you to circumcise the flesh of your sons eight days after they're born mm. so that there will be a sign mm. of a covenant for I have made a difference between you and the Egyptians. So you gotta understand that all throughout scripture, God uses the law of distinction to separate his people from the people of the world. Even Jesus said, when speaking to his disciples, he says to the crowd, I speak in parables. Mm. He said, but to you, mm. it is given to know the Hallelujah. mystery of the kingdom of heaven. Amen. He says, I speak to them because they are outsiders. They're not, they're mm. not insiders. They're not my disciples, mm. right? Yes, so God has always placed a distinction between his people and the people of the world. Did he not say in Amos, I surely the Lord shall do nothing in the earth except he reveal it unto his servants, the prophets. So God places a distinction between his servants and the people of the world. And so we must always remember this law. We must always invoke the law of distinction. When the enemy comes to your house, you have to remind the enemy, no, 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 no. God has placed a difference mm. between my children and your children. Oh, I'm mm. feeling this. Hallelujah. We, we even see the law of distinction in Genesis chapter three, mm. when God is, he's, he's releasing the curse. And this is what he says. He says to the serpent, because you've done this, you're going to crawl on your belly all the days of your life. He says, but what I'm going to do, because I'm a God of distinction, I'm going to put a difference between her seed and your seed. I'm going to place an enmity between you. Your seed will bruise her heel, but her seed will bruise your head. And so God placed a distinction all throughout. Remember when, when God told Abraham, he says that the child of the bondwoman 
will not be heir with the child of promise. Mm. He made a distinction between them. Oh. He said that this is my child and this is, notice, did you notice that God made such a distinction that he says when he tells Mo, uh, Abraham to sacrifice Isaac, he tells, he tells Abraham, sacrifice your only son. Yes, sir. He had more than one son. He had Ishmael, was the firstborn. <laughs> God didn't even acknowledge the son of the flesh. Mm. God never even recognized him. He never even acknowledged him. He said that Isaac is your only son. Mm. <laughs> Why? Because whatever is born of the flesh is flesh. flesh. And whatever mm. is born of the spirit mm. is spirit. Right. And here's what the Bible says. Whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. So here's the key. In order to activate the law of distinction, I must be a person of faith. I must be a person of faith because faith activates the law of distinction. When I'm walking in faith, watch this, the realm of the spirit distinguishes me mm. from anyone else. Mm. I am distinguished in the realm of the spirit when I'm walking in faith. Faith is a distinguisher. Mm. Now watch this, faith is a distinguisher, but fear is an extinguisher. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Faith is a distinguisher, but fear is an extinguisher. Nothing will put out your fire like fear. Hmm. Nothing will put out your joy like fear. Nothing will bring in discouragement like fear. Hey. In fact, fear gives permission to the kingdom of darkness to occupy your space. Hmm. Every time we embrace fear, we are inviting the realm of darkness to occupy our space. And that's why we need to be very, very cautious in this hour. We need to be cautious because this is what the Lord showed me. He literally showed me this. He showed me that what's, what, what's happening in these perilous times is that the prince of the power of the air is broadcasting a signal. He's broadcasting a signal. Now, there was a time when I used to drive a lot. I used to drive like um, I would fly into Chicago and I would drive 90 minutes to go to South Bend, Indiana to do a TV show. So I, I would drive like that uh, uh, from time to time. And one of the things I would do when I was driving is listen to the radio. And... This is interesting because as you're driving in your car and the radio is broadcasting, depending on the, the location of your car and the signal that you're transmitting will determine what you're hearing out of your radio. So I could be listening to a station, but when I get out of the frequency distance, another station will come on, even though my radio is turned to 91.5 FM mm. because I get out of the signal range. Mm. I'm now hearing static. Mm. I'm hearing static. I'm hearing a different uh, a thing. And you got to be careful because I would have it on a gospel station, a Christian station. But as I would keep driving, the Christian station would turn into a secular station mm. because I'm out of a different range. Now the frequency has changed. And now a different thing is being broadcast. Mm -hmm. Hear what I'm saying. God is saying in this season, you need to stay in range. Hallelujah. You need to stay in proximity mm -hmm. so that you don't receive the wrong signal. Amen. And God showed me that many Christians are, are out of range. And so they're getting a signal that's not God. Mm -hmm. They're getting a broadcast that's not the spirit of God. It's the spirit of fear. And the only way to overcome that is to stay in faith 
and to stay in proximity with God. You have to stay close. See, Goshen means to draw near, to draw close. And as long as the Israelites were in Goshen, as long as they were near to God, watch this, they were protected from the plague. But if they come, if they were to come out of that of that jurisdiction or that territory, they would have been subjected to the same elements that the Egyptians experienced. Even on the night of the last plague, the death of the firstborn, God says, he tells them, stay inside and put the blood on your doorpost. Again, this is the law of distinction, the spiritual law of distinction, because my, 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 that the spirit of death is going to go and he's not going to, he's going to take every firstborn except the ones who are distinguished by the blood. Those ones he has to pass over. He has to pass over. So we understand that this, 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 this issue of proximity and distinction is key on how to navigate through perilous times. Hmm. I cannot adopt a mentality that's like the world. I have to stay in the word of God. I have to stay in the presence of God. You know, I encourage people to turn off the TV and put on worship music, to turn off the, the media and, and get worship and the word in your spirit. Because what you're doing by, by, by entering into worship and the word, you're activating the law of distinction. Amen. You are separating yourself from the world system. Jesus said, you are in the world, but you're not of the world. Oh, hallelujah. You're in the world, but you are not of the world. In 1 John, I want people to write this scripture down. 1 John chapter 2, it says this. It said, Beloved, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but listen to this, but he that does the will of God will abide forever. In other words, when the rubble clears, it is the obedient child of God who will remain. When the dust settles, it is the doer of the word who will remain standing. Jesus said, he that hears my words and doesn't do them, is like a man that built his house upon sand. And when the storm came and the winds blew, great was the destruction of that house. But he that hears my words and does them is like a man that built his house upon a rock. The floods came and the wind blew, but the house remained standing. Why? The foundation of the house is the law of distinction. They're two homes, but they're built, they're built from different materials two buildings, but two different foundations. So God has placed a distinction between you and the world, between the Egyptian and the Israelite, between the child of God and the children of the devil. There is a separation. Even Jesus said that in the harvest time, he said, don't separate the sheep and he says, don't separate the, the wheat and the tear until it's harvest time because you'll end up destroying both of them. He said, but during the harvest time, there will be a separation. There will be a distinction because when the, when the harvest is fully ripe, the barley grain is evident. You can see it clearly. But when it's in, when it's in its infancy, when it's not harvest time, the wheat and the tear or the barley grain, they look identical. Mm. But when the harvest comes, there's a separation. So what God is saying is there is a separation, the law of distinction. I'm telling you, it's a powerful, powerful uh, 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 concept. So I want to share this other scripture out of um, uh, the book of um, 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 
Yes, starting with verse 15. Second Timothy 2, beginning with verse 15. He says of Timothy, Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. This is what he says, But shun profane and vain babblings. Can I stop right there? Mm. Pastor, yes. I want to exhort the people. We need to shun mm. all vain babblings in this season. Mm. Listen, I'm all for uh, 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 researching and understanding things, but some of these uh, conspiracy theories yes, are toxic to your spirit, and they put more fear in you than faith. Yes, sir. And we need, <laughs> we need to shun, the Bible calls it vain babblings. Come on. You, listen, you're more, you're more concerned with 5G than 3G. And 3G is the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. <laughs> <laughs> Pastor, yes, sir. we can't be concerned with 5G than the, than the Trinity. Listen to what I'm saying. We need to be, instead of worrying about 5G, you need to be worried about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Make sure that you're in the will of God. Amen. Make sure that you're connected to him. Amen. And Paul said, he says, don't entertain vain babblings. Mm. They don't do anything for you. They don't do anything. They leave you with questions than, more than answers. He says, Paul says, avoid this thing. Avoid vain babblings. Yes. Then he says, then he says this. He says, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. Yeah. That's, is that what he says, yeah. Pastor? Yes, sir. Yeah. He the, says, the viewers, they can also see it right online. Yeah. Okay, I see. So he says it will increase ungodliness. So what we need to do to navigate through perilous times, make sure that you're walking in godliness. This is not a time to operate in ungodliness. It's not a time to act like the world, to listen to the world. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus says that they speak of the world and the world hears them. Some things that they, the people post on Facebook, I don't even see it. You know why? Because it's foreign to me. My ears don't even pick it up. My eyes don't even register because it's of the world. I'm not connected with it. And you have to disconnect yourself. You have to unplug yourself from the world. The this is what the Bible says. He says, and their word will eat as doth a canker. Now watch this. This is interesting. A canker is like a sore. It's an open sore. Like you can have a canker sore in your mouth. You can have a canker sore in your skin. It's a sore that won't close. It won't heal. And every time something passes through, there's an agitation. And the Lord says in this season that, that the words of false teachers, the words of propaganda, the words of the ungodly, will become a canker sore inside of you. He said their word will eat like a canker. And that's why you have to be careful. Pastor, can I say something right here? Yes, I want to say something right here. Some of us, what some of us are doing, because we're desperate, we're fishing for voices. We're, and we're listening to every voice except the voice of your pastor, except the voice of the person God has given jurisdiction, uh, hallelujah, over you. Mm. The, the person who watches for your soul, who must give an account for your soul before God. In other words, you must never let that person's voice diminish in your life mm. on account of listening to other voices. Mm. Listen, if you're listening to 15 Facebook apostles and five <laughs> Instagram prophets, what happens is that it's bringing confusion into your spirit. Hmm. Huh? So yes, it brings confusion. And so now you don't know whether I should sit or stand, whether should I stay or go? Should I turn or sit straight? I don't know because I'm getting different instructions from different people 
that are not saying the same thing. And so we must make sure that we're listening to the right voices. If you want, if you want to navigate perilous times, you have to listen to the right voice. Imagine being in the storm, and instead of listening to the captain, you you listen to the the workers on the boat. You you listen to the janitor who says, "Hey, man, we need to go this way." But the captain is saying, "Do north." But but the workers on the boat are saying, "We need to go east. We need to go west." Listen, you need to listen to the captain of your ship. Don't listen to everybody on the ship. Listen to the captain because the captain knows where he's going. The captain has training. The captain is prepared for the storm. Listen, his, his, his leadership is not changed because of a storm. In fact, he becomes more important and significant in the storm because he's trained for this. I really want to encourage us. Stop listening to every voice, every Tom, Dick, and Harry giving you a prophetic word. Stop listening to every uh, Jack and Jill that went up to heal and all of this stuff and every Humpty Dumpty that fell from the wall. We have to be careful that we're listening to the word of God and to the people God has appointed over us that we are not having a spiritual buffet. Because what happens is when you eat from different sources. Now, Pastor, you know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. Like like what, what like myself, when I was growing up, and I'm sure you experienced the same thing growing up in Nigeria, your parents didn't want you eating at everybody's house. Mm-hmm. You did, you don't, they didn't let you eat at everybody's oh, house. Yeah. And the the reason they let you eat at everybody's house is because you don't know how to source what's coming into you. <laughs> I don't know how to source, right? I don't know how I trace or identify where the ailment came from. You might have a belly ache afterward. You might get sick and, and, and you don't know where it came from. You don't know where the sickness came from. And God is saying that a lot of people are, are eating from different troughs mm. and eating from different uh, plates, right? And some of these plates, some of these troughs that you're eating from are contaminated. Mm. Mm. And it creates chaos. And Paul says, avoid these things or the word will eat in you like a canker. Mm. Now listen, who concerning who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrow the faith of some. Nevertheless, this is my point that I'm getting to, verse 19. The foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knows them that are his. He knows those who belong to him. Listen, God has your number, as they say. He knows who you are. Even the very hairs on your head have been numbered by God. And the Lord knows your name. He knows your address. He knows who you are. Hallelujah. Glory to his holy name. He knows who you are. You do not have to be afraid. Hallelujah. God knows how to locate you. And so this is what he says. This is what he says. He says, and let everyone that names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Hallelujah. It says this in verse 20, but in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth and some to honor and some to dishonor. Mm -hmm. Verse 21, if a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel of honor sanctify, there's that principle again, mm-hmm. and meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. In other words, God says you have to be set apart in this season. Amen. You have to be set apart. The law of distinction. The Lord has placed a difference between you and everybody else. Hallelujah. So that when you, when the world says there's a casting down, you will say there's a lifting up in Jesus' name. 
There's a lifting up. There's a lifting up. In fact, I want to just prophesy. Some of you are going to have a better season after the COVID-19 than you have before. Amen. Some of your churches are going to be more thriving after COVID-19 than before. Because sometimes God has to separate the chaff from the wheat. God has to separate the clean from the unclean. He has to separate the productive from the unproductive in order for you to see the fruit Amen. that God purpose and ordained for your life. Amen. My grandfather was a farmer, pastor, and I remember uh, learning a lot about farming. And one of the things that I learned is there's a principle in Luke chapter 13, beginning with verse 7. And it talks about how in this parable, Jesus talks about a tree that's not producing fruit. And he says that, cut it down. The Lord of the harvest says, cut it down because why it's encumbering the ground. And God said to me, this is a time where he's removing the things from our lives that are not fruitful, mm. that are not productive, mm. that are not bringing forth fruit. Because listen, Anything in your life that takes up space but doesn't produce fruit is a spiritual hazard. Mm -hmm. Anything in your life that takes up space but is unfruitful mm -hmm. is a spiritual hazard mm -hmm. because God never authors anything that's fruitless. Mm -hmm. Anything that's fruitless is illegal in the economy of God. Mm. Because he said, be fruitful and multiply everything he created. The fish are fruitful. The trees are fruitful. The bees are fruitful. Adam and Eve were fruitful. Anything God created in the earth. Do, uh, Genesis chapter 8, verse 22. As long as the earth remains, there will be seed time and harvest. Everything God created in the earth is fruitful, which means that anything in my life that is not producing fruit, hmm. it must be cut off. That's why Jesus said in John chapter 15, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. He cuts it off because it is not legal. It is not lawful in the economy of God. It is not authorized by God. God does not produce fruitless fruit. Mm. He doesn't produce, listen, he doesn't produce anything that's fruitless. And so anything in your life that's taking space, but is unfruitful is a spiritual hazard that must be addressed. Amen. A spiritual hazard. So how do we, and I'm going to close with this, how do we navigate perilous times? Well, number one, we have to draw near. We have to draw near to him. He said, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Your protection is in your proximity. I, I felt that. Yeah. Pastor, yes, I saw something. I saw something on the Discovery Channel that blew my mind. It was a documentary about mountain goats. And these mountain goats are so agile that they can almost scale a 90 degree angle. And they show these mountain goats because the, the mountain goats, they live off of a salt that comes off of the dam. They live from this salt solution. And they have to lick it every day else they'll become dehydrated. Okay? Mm -hmm. Watch this. So the mountain goat is, 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 is hypersensitive to the smell of the salt. When the dam begins to, to uh, rise and the water begins to permeate the dam, they can smell the salt coming off of the dam. So what they do, they scale the wall no matter how high it is. They will go up to uh, uh, 500 feet mm. of the wall just to lick the salt. 
and there was a part of this 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 uh, documentary where they showed a newborn baby goat. And this baby goat, as the mother left the baby goat behind and began to scale the wall, the baby goat began to scale the wall with her, even though it's dangerous. The baby goat and, and the, and the um, commentator said, he said, the baby goat is coded to the mother, mm. that her DNA is programmed to follow the mother because the mother is her source of sustenance. Mm. If the mother leaves, the baby dies. So the baby goat will scale a dangerous wall just to stay close to the mother. That's how powerful the connection is. Mm. Because no matter how hazardous it seems, the safest place is near the mother. Mm. And I wanna prophesy over you today and tell you that no matter how hazardous it seems, the safest place is staying near to the father, is staying close to him. It doesn't matter the terrain. It doesn't matter the climate. It doesn't matter the situation. It doesn't matter the crisis. Stay close to God because close to him is the safest place you can be in. Hallelujah. The greatest place of safety is in the bosom of the father, is near the heart of the father. And so that's the first thing we need to understand. Draw near to God in this season. Stay close to him. Don't, don't let yourself, listen, pastor, sometimes even as pastors, we notice that some of the members begin to draw away in the midst of the crisis. They, they, they're not as committed. They're not as involved mm. because they're, because they're responding to the crisis. But what they need to understand is the safest place is the house of God. And the house of God is not just the physical building, but the house is the community. Mm. Stay connected. Mm. Stay connected. Whether it be on Facebook, whether it be on, on uh, Instagram, WhatsApp, make sure you stay close to the community. Because that's Goshen. That's the safest place you can be. Amen. Number two, you need to understand, stay in faith. Stay in faith. The Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. It means that in order to stay in faith, you need to diligently seek the Lord. Meditate in the word. Meditate in the word, stay in worship, okay? Now, number three, number three, we're talking about navigating uh, uh, perilous times. Yeah. Number three, separate yourself from ungodly voices. Mm. Separate yourself from ungodly voices. The Bible says that these voices, if not scrutinized, can leave a canker inside of you. God says, separate yourself from ungodly voices. Don't listen to everybody. You need to be discriminating. You need to be discerning. The word discernment means discrimination. You need to discriminate between good and evil. Watch this. Between almost right and righteous. <laughs> Pastor. Pastor. You see, the new deception in this season is not good versus evil. Mm. It's almost good versus good. Mm. It's almost right versus right. It's the mixture. So God says in this hour, you need to separate yourself from everything that is contrary to the word of God and to the purpose of God in your life. Avoid mixture at all costs. Nothing's more dangerous than mixture. Hmm. Do you know that when they're making steel, if they mix the wrong elements in the steel, the steel will become brittle. Its integrity can become compromised. Hmm. Listen, if you mix with the wrong thing, your integrity can become compromised. This is what the word says. It says, it says evil communication yeah. corrupts good manners, good conduct, good way of life. 
evil communication. What you have in your ear, all of this can affect your character. It can affect your integrity. It can cause you to miss out on what God has for you, beloved. And lastly, I'll say this. You need to realize that there is a distinction between you and the world. Please write that down. You need to know there's a distinction. I'm different. You ought to say that every day. I'm different from the world. I'm separate from the world. The world may say this, but that doesn't apply to me. I'm different from the world. I have a different kingdom. I'm a, I'm a citizen of a different kingdom. I'm, I'm a part of a different society. I'm a part of a different culture with different protocols. I'm not the same as everybody around me. I am different from the world. I'm telling you, everybody may say there's a casting down, but you will say there's a lifting. You will say this is my season of rejoicing. You will say my time of promotion is here. You will say that the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. You will say that great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Why? Because there is a distinction. There's a distinction. There's a distinction. So, Father, we just thank you. We thank you, Lord. As I turn over to the man of God, we thank you for this time. I pray that, God, every seed sown today upon good ground will bring forth fruit. We commit this into your able hands in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Wow. God richly bless you, sir. Let me do something. <laughs> Hallelujah. In Amen. Fact, we have been blessed. We have been blown away. Uh, the revelation, uh, at, the, uh, at the beginning, I was trying to write that, but at the point I told myself, no, 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 no. I have to listen to this. I mean, I don't even know where to start from, but thank God you summarize it also in the end. Viewers, ladies and gentlemen, I know that, I know that, I know that we have been blessed tonight. Uh, we want to thank God for the life and the ministry of Dr. King and Bridge. God richly bless you there. We pray that thank the you, good sir. Lord will continue to keep you and uh, take you from glory to glory. Uh, thank quite you. a number of people joined also from Cyprus, Sister Louis Telsus. Uh, I'm sure that they are waiting for you. November, no, October, November, we'll see. We'll work it out. Pastor Elijah, <laughs> God bless you. Uh, people from Cyprus, God bless you. All of us, Switzerland, God bless you from the States. God bless you, Brian. We, we, we love you. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have been told how to navigate in perilous times. We have to draw near to God. We have to stay in faith. We have to separate ourselves from ungodly voices. And that there is a distinction between us and the world. Apostle, you made mention of something uh, about, uh, about the community, that church is not the building, but is the community. Uh, and yes. it is important, even if we are not meeting in a building now, that you stay connected in the community that God has placed you. I, 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 yes. I, 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 I believe even uh, that some people, uh, they don't have the understanding of that. It is very, very important. That's why the Bible said that Jesus, according to his custom, he didn't mm. forsake the assembly of, That's of, right. of, 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 of the saint, according to his custom. He, mm -hmm. he didn't say, I am God uh, in the flesh. I, I know it all. He was with them. So, but <laughs> this day and this time, people think because I have the Holy Spirit like you, uh, it doesn't mean that I need you. No, 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 no. no. The, I just believe that God is taking us to the foundation uh, because mm -hmm. there are certain foundations that have been destroyed. And the Bible said, if this foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? And I believe yeah. that God is taking us to that foundation of the importance of community. 
like mm. you said, sir. So that yeah. we, by the time we come back, uh, we must be be different, and that we see the importance of 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 that church community because. Mm. We, we now have time to seek the face of God, and I, I believe, like what you said, God is separating us from the things that are taking space in our life so that That's right. the better uh, uh, purpose of God will be made manifested in our life. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Yeah. I don't know Can if I you just have the last something? word. Yeah. Hmm. I want to say something to that because I was while you were talking, I was looking this, at this scripture. And uh, you're so right. The, the, the mark of the beast, the mark of the beast is not but, but one of the, when you look at Reve, Revelation 13, it's not just the, and I'm not going to get into end time prophecy, 